Are you hungry? Actually, I made sure to eat a good lunch today, so I'm okay. I say we get some dinner. How about that place on the corner? Sure. Mind if we make a stop first? There's something I have to do. At the blood donor clinic? Yeah. I knew I had to be at least 17 years old to donate, so after my 17th birthday, I called to register. Now I just book an appointment through their website every two months or so. Oh, can you blow it off this one? I'm starving. Because I booked the appointment, I know they'll be ready and waiting for me. I should really keep it. But I don't get it. Why are you a blood donor in the first place? You'll see. called a blood donation, silly. People donate because they want to help Canadian Blood Services provide blood and blood products to people who might need them. And you're the only guy doing this on a regular basis? No, lots of people do. I read that the Canadian Blood Services receives 900,000 units of blood a year, which is processed and used to help thousands of patients. But there's always a need for more. I still don't get it. If there are so many people donating, why do you do it? We could be eating a great meal right now. Trust me, you'll see. Donor eligibility criteria. Donors need to provide identification with their name and signature or name and photo. They need to be at least 17 years of age. Donors need to be in good health and feeling well the day they donate. They must meet a height weight requirement. Donors must complete a health questionnaire. Blood pressure, pulse, temperature, and iron level, hemoglobin, are all checked before the donation. Healthy donors can give blood regularly. Before I donate, there are a few steps I have to follow. Like having the hemoglobin levels in my blood tested. Ouch! <laughs> Actually, it doesn't hurt. Hemoglobin is a protein that helps red blood cells move oxygen through the body. And they need to make sure I have enough of it before I can make a donation. It helps that I eat well, which allows my body to create enough iron, a key ingredient for hemoglobin. Don't remind me of food. <laughs> I also have to fill out this donor registration form and have a private interview with one of the staff. What for? They need to screen donors to assess for risky behaviors that might make them ineligible to donate. It's all a part of their commitment to blood safety. Okay, I'll just wait over there and listen to my growling stomach. The last thing I have to do before making my donation is have my blood pressure and body temperature checked. I can save you the time. He's the healthiest guy I know. I can't remember the last time he was sick. It's true that I try to live a healthy lifestyle because I want to be the most effective blood donor that I can be. <laughs> Qualities of a healthy blood donor. Before donation, blood donors should have had something to eat and adequate sleep. Drinking fluids before donation will help donors maintain their blood volume. In general, healthy blood donors eat well, drink plenty of fluids, and lead a healthy lifestyle. The donation process. Once the donor registers, their hemoglobin, iron level, is tested. The donor fills out a questionnaire called the record of donation. The private screening interview is where the donor has their blood pressure, pulse, and temperature taken. They are also asked some additional questions to make sure they're eligible to donate. Donation time. The donor goes to the donation area, has a seat on one of the beds, and has their arm swabbed with a disinfectant. A new sterile needle is used for each blood donor. One unit of blood measures about two cups, or about the measurement of a bottle of water. It takes, on average, about 10 minutes to donate. After the donation, it's refreshment time. Volunteers serve our donors something to eat and drink in order to say thanks and help restore blood volume. Now I'm ready for my donation. Are you sure this is safe? Absolutely. They only use new sterile needles which are safely disposed after I'm finished. So they just draw your blood and that's it? It's ready for someone to use? I wouldn't say that's it. It's a lot more interesting than that. Do you want to know more? Actually, yeah. Blood may look like a simple liquid, but it's actually made from four main elements. Red cells, white cells, platelets, and plasma. Red blood cells are responsible for carrying oxygen to tissues and for removing carbon dioxide through your lungs. They are like your blood system's race car. They live for about 120 days, and in that time, they travel more than 300 miles around the body. If red blood cells are the body's race cars, then white blood cells are its army tanks. They protect the body from infection, 
but that means they often carry viruses and bacteria that could cause side effects for blood recipients. That's why they are removed from every blood donation in a process called leukoreduction. Platelets are the body's first responders. They are only fragile cell fragments, not whole cells, but they perform a very important job. If a body is injured or suffering blood loss, platelets arrive on the scene to patch things up by helping the blood to clot. Finally, plasma gives blood its liquid form. It's like a protein-rich superhighway that gets the race cars, army tanks, and first responders to where they need to be. In this way, it helps white blood cells support the immune system, and platelets control excessive bleeding. When everything works together, the bloodstream is a complicated and fascinating part of the body, protecting it, cleaning it, feeding it, and repairing it. Whoa, blood has a lot going on. That's right, which is why so much of it is needed to help save lives, whether during medical treatment or as a result of a traumatic event. Every minute of every day, someone in Canada needs blood. Watching my father uh, become ill with um, myelodysplasia and then it um, progressed to leukemia, I saw firsthand what it meant to a family to have their loved one around and to have that person be healthy and be vital and be participating in family events. Once he got his first transfusion, you know, was, there was that worry is how is this going to go and what's it going to be like? Um, but then I remember he came over to our house um, to see his grandchildren and spend time with uh, myself and my husband, my mom, my siblings. And he was actually full of beans. And he, you know, was very entertaining. And we had a wonderful barbecue and pool party. And we said, I wonder whose blood he got. Um, and it meant so much to us then. And also throughout 18 months, where he received over 100 units of blood. You can't always take a pill to feel better. You can't always go lie down and feel better. Um, Getting that liquid tissue, that living tissue from, you know, a healthy person to someone who's not so healthy, it just brings them their life because of blood, because people took the time to make an appointment and drive to a clinic and give, I got to have my dad and his wonderful personality and his time. Your donation will end up saving someone's life? That's right. Blood donations are separated into those components I described. So there's a good chance that different people will use my red blood cells, platelets, and my plasma. I don't know exactly how my donation will be used, but I know it will be very important to someone, and soon. If someone needs my platelets, for example, it will be within the next five days because that's how long platelets live. So anyone out there could be using your blood as soon as this week? Well, not quite anyone. Because I'm A positive, only A or AB positive patients can receive my red blood cells. What do grades have to do with anything? No, I'm not talking about school. I'm talking about blood types. Everyone belongs to one of the four main blood groups, A, O, B, and AB. These groups are divided into RH positive and RH negative. The group you belong to depends on the absence or presence of proteins and sugars in your blood. And you can only receive blood from people in the same group. For some groups, that's true. For example, my cousin is O-negative, which means if he ever needed to receive blood, it could only come from a no-negative donor. And only 7% of Canadians fit that bill. But my sister is AB-positive, which means she can receive any type of blood. I wonder what my blood type is. There's an easy way to find out. How? Follow my example and become a blood donor. Are you feeling well? I feel fine, thanks. Let's go to the refreshment area and grab something to eat. That sounds like a great suggestion. There's just one thing I still don't understand. What's that? What made you decide to donate in the first place? Well, the thing is, it's personal. You don't want to tell me? No, it's not that. I just mean that it's easy to assume that there are enough donors out there without you getting involved. And then something happens to make you realize how much more help is needed. My sister was in a car accident last summer. She would have died if she hadn't received the blood of more than 50 donors. Because of those 50 people, <laughs> she's still alive. That's incredible. And she's only one person. It made me think of all the others out there, parents, siblings, children, friends and colleagues, who are relying on donors to help them live another day. I want to be a part of that. I want to help save lives. And you said it was easy to register? Oh, definitely. You can call Canadian Blood Services to register, or you can come visit a clinic, just like this one, and speak to the staff. Anyways, I'm all finished now. Uh, should we go grab that meal you've been craving? Actually, there's something I need to do first. <laughs>